Well, here we are salvaging a couple more logs. It's an interesting project. Uh, we're loading up a big bur oak that we cut down, a dead one in the woods. And we have a, another bur oak up by the house. Hey, let's go back. I'm gonna start you out and uh, show you some footage of that coming down and then out here. And then we'll talk a little bit more about salvaging as we go along. So I always like to spend a little bit of time talking about the salvaging of logs and where they come from. And they're always different, whether I work with a tree company that's taking down logs, or I just happen to be by driving by someplace and they have some trees coming down and I stop and ask. In this particular case, the house belongs to a friend of mine and he had been nursing along this burr oak for a while. With the tree dead, it became time to take it down. And this is where I worked with him, he worked with me, and we coordinated a time when a tree professional could come out and do the limmy. He brought out this pretty cool spider lift and was able to get up 65 feet into the bur oak tree and limb it down. In working in a, in a situation like this, it became cost effective for the homeowner because I donated my labor uh, in exchange kind of for the wood and just helping out. So, and it also became a less expensive tree removal because the tree person didn't have to be as delicate and he wasn't doing any of the cleanup. He just had to limb the branches down and get it so we could drop the trunk. A little bit of it was hanging over the garage and that's why we didn't um, just cut the tree down straight. Plus there were several other oak trees that were in good shape and we didn't want to pull through and do any damage to the canopy so it just made sense to bring in the professional with the spider lift and limb it down kind of getting a little bit of a perspective of what it looks like uh, for the guy in the bucket way up in there are salvaging logs you will pretty much take the logs any way that you can get them but it is nice when you can work with the homeowner when you can work with the tree company that's doing that removal because then as the Sawyer side of me I can kind of help craft a little bit more of the logs that I want to save sometimes a tree person is not looking at the final log they're just looking at how can I most efficiently and the fastest take down the tree and just limit it into small little sections. Now I tend to be a little bit different than most when they salvage logs and parts of the trees. Yes, I like the big trunks, I like the big huge 10, 12 foot logs that are there, but I also like to save a lot of the smaller uh, limbs and branches because that's what I mill down make into six quarter for charcuterie boards and in the branches and in the limbs you get some really really interesting grain figure and just overall cool wood. So as I'm helping uh, Jed the homeowner kind of clean up all the branches so we can take the main trunk down I'm sorting out the pieces that I want to keep and a lot of times I'm keeping six to eight inches and up from there and in the different links. And then we're cleaning up all of the rest of it. And yes, he is the king, uh, self-proclaimed king of the three-wheelers. He's got quite the collection of three-wheelers. Um, and they do work pretty well. Anyways, time to take down the tree. And this is where we set it up that I would end up with two really nice 12-foot uh, sections and then a nice 10-foot section.
he had moved over to the second burrow tree. And this was out in the middle of the woods. And yes, it was a much different uh, tree to take down. You can just see by the trunk there how much uh, had already decayed and was rotten. And I know I'll mention it a little bit just when you're cutting dead trees down. You just have to really be paying attention and your head on a swivel because sometimes they don't uh, act like you think they're going to act. Um, leaving this section in, a, in an 11 foot section and not sure exactly how far that kind of decay goes up but we're still going to take those logs out of there we're going to mill them up and see what's inside of there and Jed does heat with wood so uh, most of the smaller branches that we don't uh, bring back and salvage um, for charcuterie boards and other flat stock will uh, end up going into Jed's fireplace, so that's why we're sorting and collecting and doing everything to do with it. It was a dead fir oak, so we knew it wasn't going to be perfect all the way down. Uh, but take a look at the stump here, it was pretty dead. And that's why you got to be crazy careful when you're working with dead trees because they just decide to pop and explode. I barely got into this, the little bit of live wood. And boom, she went down, but it did go down right where we wanted it. And then tomorrow we'll come over with the skid and load up these pieces, load up the other tree, move some of the <laughs> branch wood because Jed's going to use that for heating. And that's gonna do it for us today. Gotta get home. See ya. So one of the distinct advantages of salvaging logs in the middle of the winter is the ground is frozen. So skidding things out, um, you're not doing that much damage to anything. And plus with the assistance of a track machine, um, it's even that much less and it makes it easy to get in and out. Yeah, you still fight a little bit of ice and that's part of it, um, but loading up these logs, thank Terry. Uh, GWS, their friends, um, and they come out and help every now and then um, when I'm ready to salvage some logs. So we have all kinds of extra little fun things available to us to come get your logs, um, trucks, trailers, skids, loaders, all that fun stuff. Almost loaded up, just the small stuff. I think we're gonna drop on top of the trailer here and then we'll be heading back to the log yard. Well, this salvage is complete. We've got all the oak logs back to the log yard. Just really, really good looking grain in there. Just beautiful, nice, tight uh, grain. This burr oak is going to mill up quite nice. The biggest of them, just a teeny little bit of rot in the bottom just starting. 
really not going to be an issue uh, some nice branching in here end up with some nice crotch and some really cool figure coming out of that right there pretty excited about some of this uh smaller limbs because when we start getting into charcuterie you can just see all this branching comes together we're going to be milling most of this up look at that turn right there with a little bit of a y we're going to be milling most of that small branch and limb at six quarters so it's going to be just absolutely perfect for uh charcuterie boards so excited get them cut get them dried and they'll be ready for the next holiday season and yeah i'm not sure how big that stuff will get cut maybe 11 quarter maybe 10 quarter somewhere in there um, but hey thanks so much for following along i know you heard me talk about it already salvaging logs trees that uh, were coming down or were dead anyways and giving them a higher purpose a second use another life which is really really pretty cool here if you have a tree a log in minnesota you really need uh need want to see it given a higher purpose let me know reach out we'll come get it have all kinds of uh equipment and stuff to make that happen it's quite fun um, and you can see everything in the log yard has been salvaged and i'll just turn around over here and you can see we start to mill everything and then it starts to dry out so this is wonderfully salvaged logs right here here's some of that charcuterie stock that's drying this will hit the kiln next uh thanks so much for following along hit that subscribe button hit the like for the video hit the bell for notification thanks so much glenn here uh workshop at the gardens and we'll catch you next time bye bye